Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure states that the pressure of a mixture of gases is simply the sum of, of the individual pressures of each of the gases. Each of those are known as the partial pressures. The P total is equal to the pressure of each of the gases P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus however many gases you have. Air has a total pressure of 101.3 kPa. And air is made up of those ga gases, oxygen, nitrogen, argon, water, and CO2. The pressures listed on the bottom are the pressures of each in kPa. And if you notice, they add up to 101.3. So in this problem, they have four gases. And they're in a 5 liter container at 20 degrees Celsius, which in this problem, those two values do not matter. So our total pressure is going to be equal to the pressure of gas 1 plus gas 2 plus gas 3 plus the pressure of gas 4. The thing to watch out for is all the pressures need to be in the same unit. And in this case, they were all given in ATM. So the total pressure is 4.8 ATM. The first gas is 1.2 ATM. Second gas is 0.49 ATM. And the third gas is 0.78 ATM. So we can figure out the gas uh, or the pressure of gas 4 by simply subtracting. And like I said, double check all of them have the same unit. If not, you'd have to convert to make sure they are in this correct unit before subtracting or adding. So the pressure of gas 4 is 2.33 atm. So looking at the next one, you can pause the iPod and try this one on your own. We have a total pressure that's due to oxygen, xenon, and helium. They want their answer in TOR, so we're going to want to make sure that everything has a pressure of TOR before we plug it in. Total pressure was 972, and it was given in TOR, so we didn't have to convert that. The pressure of helium, though, is 0.458 atm, so that does need to be converted before we convert to TOR. And yesterday, we talked about converting pressures. Remember, 1 goes with ATM, 760 goes with TOR. By multiplying, we get 348 TOR. This can now go back to our main equation. And next, we have oxygen, which was given in KPA. Again, we're going to need to convert that. So 101.3 kPa equals 760 torr. So that gives us 555.9 torr. And again, this can now be plugged back into our main equation. And now that they're all in torr, we can solve for the pressure of xeon by simply subtracting and we get 68.1 torr. Go ahead and pause the iPod and try your next problem. This problem is going to be very similar, but a little twist to it. It says we have three gases, so just P1, P2, and P3. 
and they want their answer in tor. So the total pressure was given at ATM, so we're going to go ahead and convert that to tor. So one ATM, 760 tor, and that's going to equal 962, or sorry, 965.2 tor. So this can be plugged into our Dalton's Law equation. The third gas is 650 tor, so we can plug that in. And then gas 1 and gas 2 are the same partial pressure, which means we can say that that's x, and that's x, which will give us 2x. So 2x is equal to 157.6 tor. Oh, my bad. 2x is equal to 315.2 tor. Dividing by 2 we get 157.6 tor. So gas 1 and gas 2 would each have a pressure of 157.6. Collecting gas over water is a special type of Dalton's Law problem. It's the total pressure is equal to the pressure of the gas that's being collected plus the pressure of the water. Potassium chloride, KClO3, decomposes to potassium chloride, KCl, and oxygen gas, O2, when heated. Manganese 4 oxide, MnO2, is added to speed up the reaction. The oxygen gas produced in the reaction can be collected by bubbling it through water and collecting it in a bottle or graduated cylinder. As oxygen gas is generated, the gas bubbles rise to the top and displace water from the cylinder. This method of collecting a gas is based on the assumptions that the gas does not react with water and that it is not appreciably soluble in it. The oxygen gas collected in this manner is not pure because water vapor is also present in the cylinder. The total gas pressure is equal to the sum of the pressures exerted by the oxygen gas and the water vapor. Consequently, we must allow for the pressure of water vapor when we calculate the amount of O2 generated. The partial pressure of O2 equals the total pressure minus the pressure due to water vapor. So this is simply stating that when you collect a gas over water, you're not going to have just the gas that you collected. You're also going to have a small amount of water vapor, and that water vapor needs to be accounted for. We can do this by looking at a chart like this. We can find the pressure of water vapor based on the temperature. The higher the temperature, the higher the water vapor pressure. If you look at it, uh, 5 degrees Celsius has a pressure of 6.5 millimeters of mercury, while 100 degrees Celsius is 760 millimeters of mercury. And your chart doesn't have everything, so notice I had to give you the 14 degrees Celsius. So on here, our total pressure is equal to the pressure of hydrogen, because that's the gas we're collecting, plus, because we're collecting it over water, we should have a pressure of water vapor. Just like before, our pressures need to be in the same units. Since it's at 14 degrees Celsius, our pressure of water vapor is 12 millimeters mercury. So the total pressure was 113 kPa. We want our answer in kPa, so we're going to convert the 12 millimeters of mercury to kPa. There's 760 millimeters of mercury in 101.3 kPa. Multiplying and dividing that we get 1.6 kPa. So now we can subtract and we can get our pressure of hydrogen. 
which is 111.4 kPa. Go ahead and pause the iPod and try this next one on your own. Alright, so P total is equal to the pressure of hydrogen, again that's the gas we're collecting, plus the pressure of water at 12 degrees Celsius. Again, 12 degrees wasn't on your chart, so it was given. We want our answer in kPa, so we're going to want to make sure everything's in kPa. Total pressure was given as 78.5 which I seem to have written a typo there, so it should be 78.5. And we have our water vapor pressure should be converted to kPa. So 760 Tor, 101.3 kPa gives us a water vapor pressure of 1.4 kPa. Subtracting that out, we get a pressure of 77.1 kPa. And again, I had written the wrong value, but that is the correct answer, 77.1. Last one, you can pause it and try this one. Your water vapor pressure is 525.8 Tor. So total pressure is equal to pressure of oxygen, because again we're collecting oxygen this time, plus the pressure of water since it's being collected over water. We aren't given what unit we want our answer in, so I'm just going to go ahead and find it in ATM. Again, the 90 degrees water vapor got cut off from the diagram in your notes, so it should have been 525.8 Tor. So converting that to ETM, we have 760 Tor equals 1 ATM. which is 0.69 ATM. So P pressure of oxygen is 0.61 ATM. Again, you could have solved for Tor or millimeters of mercury or KPA. I just solved for ATM since that's what my total pressure was given in.